pencil going, <clears throat> what did what you say? <laughs> okay, take your total body weight, divide it by 2.2, and take that number, multiply it times 1.5, and mm. that will give you the total number of grams of protein you should consume a day to put yourself actually in what we call positive nitrogen balance so you can start building muscle instead of losing muscle. Mm -hmm. And then you take that total number of grams divided by seven because there's seven grams in one ounce of protein. Of protein. And you'll have the total number of ounces or grams. So you can look at packages of protein powders, see how many grams you're getting with one drink. If you're getting 23 grams in one you know, one glass of protein powder. Maybe you want to do that twice a day for 46 grams. There's maybe a third of what you need or half of what you need. That's really good information. It's okay. helpful. Okay. Fats and oils. Yes. Tell us about them. I okay. know it was coming up. Fats and oils. Fats and oils. Fat phobia. Everybody's <laughs> fat phobic in America. Oh, fats and oils. You really blame them. Every Don't time you look around, low fat this, no oh. fat here, no oil here. Okay. Oh, it's incredible. Good point. Americans, never buy low fat again. Who's going to come after me? <laughs> okay, you never need to spend another dime for anything low fat or non fat. Okay? Really, Especially you don't. Especially if you're chasing this good protein that's running up and down right, the field. Right, right. Uh, and the reason for that is when you look at the American diet, everyone's missing fats now, and we're seeing all types of essential fatty acid huh. related deficiencies, yes. diseases, chronic health problems, including hypoglycemia. Um, hypothyroid, uh, fibromyalgia, mm -hmm. um, uh, Renaud syndrome, which is, you know, that cold tip of the fingers and toes and nose, those types of things. All types of circulatory problems, all types of energy problems are related to missing oils in the diet mm -hmm. or essential fatty acids. So the key here is what is an essential fatty acid versus what is a saturated fatty acid. An essential fatty acid is a good much needed, very necessary, on a daily basis, oil that you need to put into your body. And it comes from raw seeds, raw nuts, avocados, olives, and cold water fish. Okay, hmm. that's why I tell people you should consume, like, fish at least three or four days a week. And consume your animal products three days a week, you know. And maybe do a vegetarian day one day, or do beef one day a week, or venison or buffalo one day a week. But you need to take these oils in your body every single day now. I had a girl who, she's lifting weight, she came in and she's doing really well. Um, she had a lot of health problems, she was young, 32 years old, <clears throat> and she was really nervous about fat. So she came in, she goes, I said, why aren't you consuming any oils? Well, she dropped like a pound in one week, and I said, you, if you're following this diet correctly, you should be dropping at least two pounds every week, you know, this protocol that yes. we laid out for her. And she goes, well, I'm really nervous about my fats. And I said, well, first of all, fats are saturated, Oils are unsaturated. Unsaturated fats help you to burn stored saturated fat on your hips, your thighs, your buttocks. Da 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 da. So you have to get the unsaturated fatty acids in every single day. I have people consume all of their oils from unsaturated fatty acids. Okay, not from saturated fatty acids. So if you consume those unsaturated fatty acids, you're going to be in great shape, but you need at least 30 grams a day. And we're back to grams. How Let's much see. is a gram? All right. To get 30 grams a day, you would have to consume like a tablespoon of a raw cold pressed oil. It should be organic and it should be straight from those raw seeds and nuts we talked about before. That oil um, should come from walnut, safflower, flaxseed oil. The essential balance oil is great. The Udo's oil is great. It's a combination of all those omega-3, 6, and 9s together. Those are the fat burners and the immune boosters. And that was called Udo's? Udo and essential balance. And essential They're both balance. very good. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Hmm. And there's some other ones out there. People are starting to copycat them. So, I mean, these oils you should take in at least two tablespoons a day, but one tablespoon gives you 14 grams of oil or fat, but it's unsaturated. It's a fat burner and it increases immunity. It will increase your body temperature. It helps with circulation, helps with digestion, helps with memory, helps with hormone balancing, many things, mm -hmm. okay? So you should do that every day. Now, if you do one tablespoon a day, it's only 15 grams of fat. Well, this girl was maybe doing 10, so I pointed out to her, for somebody who doesn't exercise six days a week like you, you need at least 30 to 35 grams of fat a day or oil, and you're only getting 10 or 15. Why are you doing that? Hmm. You know, you're exercising like a, like a crazy woman here, so that's okay, but if you're going to do that, you must supplement more. The body needs more. So if you do, say, a tablespoon of raw seeds or nuts, you've got another five grams of fat. If you did um, six olives, large olives, there's another five grams of fat. 
if you did a half of an avocado, that's about probably 10 to 12 grams of fat. I see. Okay, but they're unsaturated. Now, I have a lot of dietitians telling my clients who work, you know, dietitians work in hospitals, yes. not to eat avocados. They're too high in saturated fat. Hmm. All you have to do is pull out the Department of Agriculture's, you know, the Nutritional Content of Foods booklet, which is a book we use in undergraduate school. It shows you exactly how much unsaturated poly and monounsaturated fat there is in a food, and it's very obvious to see that a avocado is very, very low in saturated fat, higher in mono and higher in poly. It's a plant. It's a seed. It's a seed. Right. 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 So it's a healthy, beneficial fat for you. Mm. Yes, if you sit down and eat six avocados a day, you're probably going to get a little pudgy. <laughs> but not many people would. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if you can't stop eating it, don't start. <laughs> or just go and eat it out of the house. Don't keep it at home. So some people tell me they can't stop when they eat seeds and nuts. Mm -hmm. So I go, well, then don't carry the whole bag with you. Just take a small handful. Oh, know, that's th a good idea. This little area right here, this little yes. pocket, is about a tablespoon. Surprisingly yeah. enough, when you do that, and you had mentioned that on one of the other shows, and I had started doing that because I have a, a practice and I'm working very long hours, mm. and just a little bit sometimes helps so much. Raisins and nuts. Uh, sure, pour in, your in blood the, sugar. Yeah, it really does, and mm -hmm. it feels wonderful. Got to ask you another question. Well, I've sure. got, got lots to get in here, and that is uh, people are always talking about carbohydrates. Right. Tell us a little bit about carbohydrates. I, I, okay. I get these crazy athletes and these long-distance runners saying, I'm carbohydrate loading. And all your vegetarians. Oh, yes. Right? Yes. Okay, carbohydrates are basically what we call energy food. Now, again, we kind of tapped on this in the beginning of the show here, but there are what we call three classifications of foods. They're either you know, live or they're dead or they're highway robbers. They come into your body and they stick you up and take out all your vitamins and minerals. <laughs> the same goes for <laughs> carbohydrates. Okay. okay. The little banditos are the bad guys. I see. The dead ones are kind of benign. And then we've got the live one. The live carbohydrates are fruits and vegetables and hmm. then are whole grains. And in the order of importance, vegetables are first, fruits are second, and our whole grains like our rice or potatoes our um, beans and legumes, you know, our sweet potatoes, our starchy or vegetables, you know, like our corn and our peas, are in that category. They're what we kind of call the healthier foods. If you eat too much of the rices, though, you may have trouble losing weight. Oh, really? Okay, yes. I have people come in all the day and they're like, well, I'm only eating two cups a day. Well, it's very high in the glycemic index, so it creates ah, more sugar in right. the body. Okay. So even though they're healthy and they're really beneficial, watch them a little bit. Do more of the fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. If you plan your diet, Kurt, to where you're doing nine servings of fruits and vegetables a day, that's a lot of eating. Yes. You know, that's doing two cups of vegetables at lunch and two cups of vegetables at dinner and three pieces of fruit every day. And then you calculate how many grams of protein you need. Mm -hmm. And then you calculate how much oil you need. Your diet's set for you. That's not going to leave any room for Fritos and you know, potato chips and buns and things like that. Oh, see what I I'm see. saying? Hmm. So we really, really want people to consume more of the live carbohydrates. The doughy carbohydrates are pastas and breads and bagels and scones and our colas and our diet colas. I'm glad, you, said I'm glad you reiterated because this is a trouble that a lot of vegetarians run into. Right. They start uh, implementing right. the doughy foods because they're starving. Well, sure, and, and they're uh, easy and they're fast, but they're not the answer because they bring to the table no nutritional value. Anything that is processed, Kurt, it's in a bag. It goes off to the laboratory to be changed from its original constituency. It is no longer a live food. And those live foods contain very little to no nutritional value. They will not nourish your cells. They will not heal your system. They will not regenerate and help you birth healthy new cells. I see. Okay, so you have to look at the percentage of liveness in your diet versus deadness or doughiness. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you've got the very high processed foods that have additives, chemicals, coloring agents like your Fritos and your Wheat Thins and your Triscuits with the hydrogenated oils. And then you go beyond that and go to low-fat Entenmann cookies and cakes and candies and snacks and those fat-free yogurts. These are foods, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. right. <laughs> those fat-free yogurts are a big hit with women, and you know what? They're all sugar. So if you're really? eating all sugar, wait, all whoa, 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 back up. What? The fat-free yogurts are, are all, all sugar? sugar. Absolutely, or they're oh, fake rain sugar. Oh, rain on my parade! And yes. oh my goodness, that's interesting. Well, you know what? I know what? half of America just went what? <laughs> Let's pay attention to this real quick. Yes. A food is either a protein, a fat, or a carbohydrate. 
Okay. There are delegations within each of those foods. So it's a lean protein or it's a highly saturated protein. It's going to be a lean fat or oil or it's going to be a highly saturated oil like margarine or butter or dairy products. It's going to be a lean carbohydrate or it's going to be a fattening carbohydrate that's high in sugar. So anything that has the fat take, taken out of it is going to be replaced with sugar or with sodium mm -hmm. or a sugar substitute which even though it is a fake sugar will be converted by the liver to a sugar because it most relates mm. to a sugar. It looks to the body, to the liver, like a sugar molecule. So it's not like, hmm, you've been changed in the laboratory, so you're not going to be fattening. It's like, kind of looks like a sugar molecule, so hey, it is. And if you don't need that excessive energy or sugar in the body, your body stores it as fat. That's incredible. So, I, I always, watch your you frozen always yogurts. sneak in some education here, and I <laughs> learned something. All right, I gotta go quickly, but okay. I want to know about water, minerals, and um, and and vitamins. Okay, how important are they? Yes. Water. If you don't have water, you can't break down your proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. And Americans are water deficit. Most people consume coffee and sodas and count that as their liquid. Not so. Juices do not count. Juices are very high in that glycemic index, by the way. They're in the 90s and 100s, so mm -hmm. they're all sugar, even if they're natural and organic. It's all processed. Um, when you lose the fiber and fruits, you lose the available complexity of it. So water is important. I tell people you need to consume at least eight cups a day and that's pure water. We're not talking lemonade with sugar added to it or or teas and things like that. Pure water. Your body is 70 percent plus of water. If you don't drink water you're recycling all your toxins. It's like using dirty dish water over and over again washing your dishes in it every night. Mm -hmm. You don't want to keep washing your cells in dirty water. Okay, you need fresh, hmm. clean water to purify, cleanse, and detoxify. I like and to that. transport that's your good, nutrients. That, that, that settles well. You can see that yeah. you know, in your mind. That's so good. And vitamins and minerals. Vitamins and minerals are not in place of a healthy diet. They are to supplement, supplement an otherwise an optimal diet, but you must have the food present for the vitamins and minerals to work. So let's say you have a cup of coffee at breakfast and a bagel. Now, what's mm -hmm. in the bagel? negligible amounts of nutrients at all. There's nothing in coffee. It's a carcinogenic toxic chemical. It's a, it's a drug. It's in the PDR. So here you have something that has no nutritional value. You're taking a handful of B vitamins, some C's, and you have nothing for those vitamins or minerals to jump on board as a choo-choo train to transport those vitamins and minerals to their call, their place of need in the body. So don't take vitamins and minerals unless you're eating foods to utilize them well. Mm -hmm. How's that? Well, that's great, and we're, we're kind of pressed for time, but why don't you tell me uh, something about the typical American diet, or, or tell it us something stinks. like, it stinks, <laughs> okay, good. Do more live food, folks, and you'll live be foods, there. Live foods, okay. Yes, absolutely. My goodness. One quick, how can a balanced diet benefit those suffering from obesity? Well, if you start balancing those proteins to fats and carbohydrates, energy goes up and weight goes down. That's great. Simple as that. That's great. You, you know... You're, it's easy. The way you, you express things and the, and the visualizations Thanks, are just wonderful. I appreciate that. This is a wrap. It's always fun to be here. Uh, you know, thank you so much. Okay. Well, there we go again with another wonderful show with Deborah Arneson and myself, your host, Kurt Hill, who probably won't be eating yogurt and drinking coffee and stuff anymore. Good night. Thank you so much. <laughs>